Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. So there has been a bit of unusual activity on feminist Twitter over the past week, driven by, of course, uber feminist and professional victocrat Alyssa Milano. On the 10th of May, dear Alyssa tweeted this image, accompanied by a characteristically histrionic caption. Our reproductive rights are being erased. Until women have legal control over our own bodies, we just cannot risk pregnancy. Join me by not having sex until we get bodily autonomy back. I'm calling for a hashtag sex strike. Pass it on. This would seem rather an odd thing for a third or fourth wave feminist to tweet. After all, modern feminism tends to be what you'd call sex positive, you know, throwing off the shackles of women's previous sexual repression and fighting against shaming women for their activity between the sheets and, you know, claiming authority over their bodies when doing the proverbial horizontal tango. A sex strike just seems so second wave. So why has she called for this? Well, before I tell you, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I really want to hit 100,000 subscribers by June, so if you like my videos and you watch them regularly but you haven't yet subscribed, pretty please click that subscribe button now. I would really love to have you. So, back to Alyssa and her sex strike. What she is protesting with this threat of voluntary celibacy is Georgia's new and rather stringent termination of pregnancy law. Georgia Governor Brian Kemp has signed into law something called a heartbeat bill, which bans abortion at any time after a fetal heartbeat can be detected, which is usually at five or six weeks of pregnancy. It will come into effect in January next year and is what we would call some of the most comprehensive reproductive legislation you can initiate. Needless to say, the pro-choice extremists are all up in arms about this and have been for some time. In fact, this isn't the first time Hollywood has made its opinions known on the issue. In March, Alyssa Milano organized a letter from Hollywood professionals threatening to boycott the state of Georgia when it came to filming unless they ceased progress on this heartbeat bill. Among those who signed it, aside from Alyssa, of course, were Alec Baldwin, Christina Applegate, Ben Stiller, and of course, Amy Schumer. Now, if you are going to protest anything, this actually isn't a bad way to do it. Hitting someone in the wallet is a good way to definitely get their attention. It's totally non-violent and has probably more of an effect than a noisy protest because it's harder to dismiss. Nevertheless, the bill went ahead. And look, I have to comment here, though, on the arrogance of those actors. I mean, did they really think they were so important that their threatening to boycott would literally stop a change in the law? I'm not sure how many films are filmed in Georgia, but evidently it's not enough to stay the governor's hand. Now, there are a couple of things that have emerged from this situation. First is obviously the sex strike, and secondly is the abject hysteria with which much of the media has greeted this Georgia heartbeat bill. Much fake news has already been unashamedly spread, which I will absolutely clarify soon. But first, I want to really point out the irony of a radically pro-choice feminist calling for abstinence to protest abortion. That's what pro-life advocates have been suggesting forever. That is, in order to stop abortion, people should stop having sex, at least, you know, unless you want to get pregnant. It is like one giant troll, as a number of pro-life people have actually pointed out. Thanks for supporting abstinence, Alyssa Milano, the number one way to prevent unintended pregnancy. I fully support this pro-life cause. First time I've ever seen a pro-choice advocate for personal responsibility. Kudos. If you all have a rally, let me know. I'll be there. It's also, dare I say it, really quite sexist to both men and women. It perpetuates the societal stigma that women are vaguely frigid in the fact that they are apparently able to cope with long periods of time without sex. And it also perpetuates the stigma that men are inherently sexually voracious and are brought to their knees by lack of intercourse and can therefore be manipulated by women either granting it to them or denying it which Twitter users have also pointed out. Please stop feeding the narrative that women are providers and men are consumers of sex. Bribing men for equal rights with access to our bodies is not how feminism works. One, men are not the only ones who enjoy sex. Two, sex strikes reinforce the idea that our only value as women is our ability to provide gratification to men. This makes it seem like sex is something women do as a favor to men. It also furthers the misogynistic theory that women should be shamed for liking sex at all. Sorry, Alyssa Milano, but I hate this. It is all just so funny. Aside from that, 
poor Alyssa who tries so hard to do everything right by every single intersectional group is again in trouble with the gender identitarian squad. What if I don't have sex with cisgender men? Does that make me a scab? I'm confused. Erasing LGBTQIA folks from the discussion of abortion and centering solutions, if you can call this a solution around cis heterosexual sex, is counterproductive. As we can see, the proposed sex strike did not anywhere near have the universally positive effect that I'm sure Alyssa expected, or at least hoped for. My theory is that she got all overexcited because of how prolific her hashtag me too thing was and is trying desperately to recreate it. Woman, quit while you're ahead. The internet waits for no one. So about this bill, what is it exactly? Well, before I tell you, let me make it clear that I am not giving my personal opinion on the bill or on pregnancy termination or anything to do with the emotional or ideological issues surrounding that topic. I have made videos on that topic already. If you want my opinion on it, feel free to look them up. This video is about the reaction to the bill and the extraordinary amount of fake news that has been spread about it. In summary, the law not only prohibits abortion from when the baby has a detectable human heartbeat, it declares the scientific, philosophical and theological truth that an unborn child is a natural person under state law. In other words, it gives the child personhood, which is the exact opposite of what the New York legislation did, which was to take personhood away from an unborn child. There are exceptions to the law, of course, which include the usual caveats like sexual assault, incest, endangerment to the mother's life, or a terrible risk to her physical well-being, and of course a potential fetal abnormality or problem. Now this is tight, tight legislation, so of course it was going to draw the ire of pro-choice extremists. However, they have really outdone themselves this time. They are claiming that the new legislation means that a woman can be prosecuted and jailed and even get the death penalty for having not just an abortion, but performing her own abortion and even miscarrying. I mean, will you just look at those headlines? This hysteria comes from the personhood factor in the bill. Naturally, these lefty outlets took it to the extreme and neglected to look up the facts of the situation, because if they had, they would have very quickly realized that none of this is actually the case. On the subject of a woman allegedly going to jail for performing her own abortion or having a miscarriage, there are codes within this new legislation that prevent this from happening. There is, in fact, a specific code section that applies to unlawful abortions. Georgia Code Section 1612-140 states, A person commits the offense of criminal abortion when, in violation of Code 1612-141, which is the code that specifies exemptions like sexual assault, incest, etc., he or she administers any medicine, drugs, or other substance, whatever, to any woman, or when he or she uses any instrument or other means whatsoever upon any woman with intent to produce a miscarriage or abortion. A person convicted of the offence of criminal abortion shall be punished by imprisonment for not less than one nor more than ten years. Two things on this. First of all, it clearly does not specify life imprisonment. It states a prison sentence of one to ten years. Secondly, it actually can't be used to prosecute a woman for performing her own abortion or even having a miscarriage, certainly not, because to put it simply, it's written in the third person, and there is case law to support this. In Hillman v. State, the Court of Appeals of Georgia rejected the prosecution's attempts to imprison a woman who shot herself in the stomach to kill her unborn child. Interpreting section 1612-140, it stated, This statute is written in the third person, clearly indicating that at least two actors must be involved. Accordingly, it does not criminalize a pregnant woman's actions in securing an abortion, regardless of the means utilized. So, no dice on the fear-mongering by pro-choice extremists on this one. Furthermore, the new legislation actually gives women some rights. If somebody tries to prosecute a woman for an abortion, there are a number of defenses she may mount. For example, no abortion is authorized or shall be performed after the first trimester unless the abortion is performed in a licensed hospital in a licensed ambulatory surgical center or in a health facility licensed as an abortion facility by the Department of Community Health. And it also has to be performed by a properly licensed physician. If an abortion is performed in violation of this code, 
A woman may recover in a civil action from the person who engaged in such violation all damages available to her under Georgia law for any torts. In addition to that, it shall be an affirmative defense to prosecution under this article if a licensed physician, registered nurse, or anyone else who is authorized to perform an abortion provides medical treatment to a pregnant woman which results in the accidental or unintentional injury to or death of an unborn child. Plus, if she reasonably believed that an abortion was the only way to prevent a medical emergency, she can also use that as a defense. So while Georgia's new laws are indeed pretty tight, the fear-mongering being spread on the internet and in the media about it is simply fake news. It's false. So if you see anything else about the whole thing online, be sure to keep all of that in mind. If you liked that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment, and if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for my Subscribestar link and other ways you can support me.